Hello, welcome back to Oops All Arches the LTC. Today we're going to be doing Chapter 13, which is Floor Spar's Oath. However, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to just go and buy Garcia an Iron Blade. Uh, we're not we're not going to be um, actually doing the skirmish. It's just that we need, this is the place where you buy the Iron Blades. Nope. Let's retreat. I'm not saving. I don't think he's going to need it, but he might as well have a weapon that he can actually attack with. Okay, so now let's just do some quick item management before the fact. So this men's staff we store because we can't get any more usage out of it. We should trade this over to Lara Shell, she's going to be using it in this chapter. We don't need this elf fire, strictly speaking we can sell it, because I'm not going to have anyone who can use animatomes on hand anyway. And then I'm just going to store the steel bow and the short bow, because I still got their hit rates at zero. Give me your stuff. Dozzler, you can just keep all your stuff because it might be useful later on. Alright, so I guess it's time for the map then. Alright, so in terms of the units we're going to field, just remove Tana, and that's everyone we're going to take. Um, Dusel needs to be here so he can reposition Gilliam on turn 1. Vanessa is going to move here to the top right. Hormag has to be here in the bottom left, and then the position of these three has to be along the diagonal. Alright, so this is all looking good. In terms of the weapon differences that I made, um, Steel Sword I've set to zero hit, as I have with Dragon Spear, Luna, the Hand Axe, and also the Iron Bow, which is still at zero, and the Steel Bow. Uh, it's not 100 crit because he's not going to be able to hit anyone for this, but when I forgot um, that this was 255 hit and 100 crit, it led to Flyers dying, <laughs> which is a bit unfortunate. Okay, so it's time to go. So we have two new units here. We have Tephis, who sadly is no longer a dancer, she's instead a mage archer, which is unfortunate for multiple reasons. Um, so her personal skill here is Rally Spectrum, which is even reduced from what it is in Awakening, from plus two to all stats instead of plus four. We're not going to be using her. We are going to be using Garrick, just as another flunky um, Wyvern Knight. He is able to give crit plus 10 and crit avoid plus 10 to adjacent allies. Crit plus 10 is relevant for some technically possible clears, and is part of my former T Seth kill calculation. He is kind enough to come along with the hero crest in his inventory for promotion. For some reason also a silver bow that he can't use, like very much can't use. He's two ranks off. However, what we can use is this shining bow, which we're going to trade over and we're also going to rally. He's going to have the Shining Bow equipped, and he's going to just promote into a Wyvern Knight. For yet more 100% Lunar Crit gaming. His stats are not, like, amazing, but they certainly are stats that exist. Um, it's not possible to get him a javelin during this point in time, unfortunately, otherwise we'd actually be able to leverage something with this strength stat of his. Alas. Right, so... Dusel repositioned Gilliam, who just flies straight up to the two bosses, actually. Louise and Pent. Louise has Demoiselle, so he takes two less damage, and he has Jean so she takes two less damage. Anyway, Gilliam can just fly straight up and will javelin down Pent here. Both he and Louise are stationary, but as a result of killing them both, they'll both fr all the enemies on the map will frenzy. So even though the sleep staff here is still zero, I'm just going to also have Vanessa fly up and javelin down this troubadour just because it's annoying and we're always going to have to kill that one specifically anyway. 
and she's in need of something else. Right, so Cormag flies all the way south, Javelin, because he might as well. And he gets level. And then we also just have Kyle fly all the way around here. And sure, he can kill this archer. Ephraim doesn't need to do anything on this map, so he's just gonna stand here as the level 7 lord that he is. Larshell runs up here, shining bows this axe fighter, which gets her another level in the process. She's now only two levels off of being able to promote, which is something that will only allow for a mage archer when they have Gale Force as a personal skill. Natasha goes up and mends her. Garcia just stands here with his Iron Blade equipped. Seth stands here with his Iron Blade equipped. And now... Larshell kills the one with the Hand Axe. Cool. So this enemy phase is going to be quite long, so I'm just going to double speed it. Garrett gets to kill these two soldiers. And that enemy kills themselves in Lara Shell. This other cab should as well. I meant the cab that was close to Lara Shell, but these cabs were also always scripted to die. Yeah, it's a very, very long enemy phase here. Yep. There's the aforementioned Cav. And now, time for Louise to die as well. To the power of another Lunar Crypt. Get Longbow. Get crit due to having a Javelin. Get crit by another Javelin, but Cormac's pretty fine. Cool. So, it should be possible to finish this all up on this upcoming turn. So, what Garrick has to do is he has to fly over here, and it looks like it shouldn't kill, and it should not. However, the power of Luna provides. Dusel doesn't need to do anything. Ephraim doesn't need to do anything. Tevin needs to run away. So these cabs here, Gilliam, can just get into position to reach and also needs to kill this knight in the process to make sure that the enemy tunnel doesn't mess things up. Cormag gets to fly all the way south, visit and get a barrier staff, which is very nice because it's something that Natasha can use to gain even more staff experience. Speaking of Natasha, she can now mend up Larshell, who moves right up to the face of this enemy here, kills and reaches level 10. Cool. So now, in order to make sure that we kill this enemy, she moves her full move, and now we're just going to promote her. So we're going to promote her into Paladin, who can use staves and bows. She's going to be using the bows, because, as we will see very shortly, she starts at D staves, and there's not very much we can do with that, to be perfectly honest. Still, though, it's very nice because, compared to Rangers, Paladins have 8 move, so now we're going to have, yeah, an 8 move, Gale Force unit. Fantastic. So this enemy will kill itself on her, and all of these other enemies around here will kill themselves on Cormag. Vanessa's just standing over here. 
these two aren't going to do anything. And then we're just going to have Kyle kill Zenmi. Right. This is the final turn, so we're just going to let this all play out. Unless it gets really slow. So it's unfortunate we're not able to get the village that's two to the right of Gilliam. But that only contains a talisman, so I am much happier that we were able to get the barrier village, because a barrier staff gives four weapon experience per use instead of the three, which the men does, and that's what we've been using as the source of our staff weapon experience so far. So Larshall gets this kill. It doesn't really matter if whether or not we promote her, because seven experience is going to make a huge difference, I don't think. But it's nice to at least have it on the right person. Gilliam kills those calves that he moved maneuvered into position for. Rip another javelin. So Carl should get a level here. Yep, there we go. There goes that axe fighter. Enemies continue to die against poor Mag. So I didn't change the hit rates of those tomes, but there was no need because there was no danger. And goodbye, enemy sniper. It's nice to get this level on Vanessa, because she benefits more from the additional strength and magic than Gilliam does, because he has all that he needs, especially with Luna in play. Right, so that has been Floor Spar's Oath in two turns. So just to look over what we've reached in terms of our goals, Larshall has promoted I'm not sure how helpful she's going to be, but I think that she should be a more helpful flunky in terms of pure combat now than Garcia, due to having 8 move and also Gale Force. Seth, we unfortunately haven't progressed much closer to getting S Sword, but that should be perfectly doable, I believe. Now we have this Barrier Staff, which as I've mentioned will give us 4 weapon experience per use instead of 3, so let's just trade that over to Natasha now. In terms of how Natasha's staff weapon experience is going, she has used up 8 uses of this torch staff, 2, me two uses of this men's staff, and then 19 uses of the other men's staff. So what this means is that of the 150 weapon experience needed in order for her to get to warp rank, she's gotten, she's gotten tw 63 in total from mend, and 40 from torches for a total of 103. This means that using this entirety of the, of the barrier staff should get her to this point perfectly fine, which is very nice. Right, so that is all for today. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again for next map, which is Grado Keep.